Late summer is a really good time to assess how the garden's gone this year, what's worked and what hasn't, and to make plans for next year, while of course enjoying it as it is, because some of the best flowers are out now. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and it's the Late Summer Garden Tips and Tour. I'll put resources and plant names in the description below, along with timestamps, so you can jump to any part of the video that you'd like to get to quickly. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you want to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, tap the notifications bell. The Middle Sized Garden is an L-shaped walled town garden. And it's 100 feet long, which is about 30 metres. And it's 80 feet wide or 24 metres wide at its widest and half that near to the house. We're in South East England, so we very roughly equate to a USDA hardiness zone of nine, but that's because we have very mild winters. It's rare for us to go below minus six Celsius, that's about 21 Fahrenheit. But the summers, of course, are much cooler, certainly this summer is, than most zone nine summers. It's struggled really to get to 21 Celsius, mid 70s Fahrenheit uh, this season. You go out into our garden from the back door onto a terrace and then there are steps up onto what we call the parterre. This is the most formal layout in the garden and we designed it so that it would reflect the architecture of the house. Uh, the house has four rooms on each floor and they're four square and they're around a central corridor. There are four beds in the middle of the parterre but they're really quite small so we decided that we wouldn't be planting them up with a mixed border but to choose one plant with lots of impact so we chose lavender because the plants are beautiful when they're out in summer but also when it's clipped in winter and in the rest of the year it's got a good architectural presence usually now that the flowers are over we'd be trimming it back now and i trim it back quite hard there's a video about that in the description below but this year we're going to leave it a few weeks because i suddenly noticed that there were lots of birds in the lavender and they're really enjoying the seeds it isn't a particularly good quality video this because i didn't want to disturb them but you can see that there are birds in the lavender and they are loving the seeds so we're going to wait about six weeks and then we'll do it around early autumn there is quite a window where you can trim lavender. Immediately the flowers are over is fine or leaving it for six weeks or so. We once really left it as late as mid-autumn and it was fine, although perhaps better not to leave it that late. When you look to the right of the parterre, you'll see our main sunny border. And that's where I concentrate my real gardening. It's south facing and it's very open. So it gets full sun and sun loving plants grow really well there. I grew the snapdragons and zinnias from seed and it's really useful to grow at least one packet of flowers from seed or maybe even you grow one packet of flowers and a friend grows a different type and then you swap over because having a few flowers that you can just drop in into gaps at the last minute is really useful and I find annuals very useful for that. Uh, one of the most useful ones is Cosmos which was given to me by a friend in exchange for some Cerinthi. Uh, so that's really good that you can do swaps. And the Verbena bonariensis was also given to me by a friend who'd grown it from seed. I do have Verbena bonariensis in the garden and I usually let it self-seed around. But you certainly get a much better effect if you actually deliberately grow some plants and plant them. So I love the Verbena bonariensis in the garden at the moment and it's a mixture of self-seeded and plants that have been grown from seed this year. On the left of the parterre, we have our very shady border. It's north facing and there are trees. And I often see people talk about shady borders being difficult. And I can tell you this one is not difficult. The only thing you have to do to make a shady border work is to choose plants that love shade. And I've done a video on that with the Horticulturalist YouTube channel. And I'll put both those videos in the description below. So do check them out. But once you've got the plants, Actually, it's so easy care. A shady border is just so easy care. If you go for foliage contrasts, you've got the impact almost all year round. Uh, you can have lovely white flowers. There's not a great range of coloured flowers in terms of shade loving, but you could, you could have it if you look into it. Um, but weeds don't grow so fast. The flowers stay in flower longer. Uh, the plants don't seem to grow so fast. 
so you've got less pruning, less weeding. So really, a very shady border is the ultimate low maintenance border. Mine goes on up into the corner where we used to have a pergola. And now this is what I do call my difficult shady corner. And the reason for that is it's quite difficult to work out to do what to do with corners in a garden. Uh, should they be a continuation of the planting? Or can you do something like have a pergola? And what do you need there? And all garden design really starts with what you need and what you want, not what can I put here. As you'll see if you check out the garden design video with Charlotte Rowe in the description below. In the end we decided that we would just plant this corner up and we would leave the pavers there that had been there for the pergola, put table and chairs there and just see what happens. And so it's working out. I've got comfrey there, I've got a silver birch which is doing well, a strantia, some saxifrage London pride, We'll let you know how it goes. Now, the back borders of the garden are east facing, and these are a bit more of a problem because they are partial shade. They get up to six hours sun a day, depending on the time of year. And I think the difficulty with that is that it's so dependent on what your situation is, how high the fence behind it is, or the wall, whether you've got trees, what the angle of the east facing border is, and all sorts of things as to which plants will grow there. So you can put in plants that are happy with partial shade and they may be happy or you may find they're not happy. I've had more failures than successes in this border. You can see here there's a Rudbeckia goldsturm. Now that's the remainder of a clump of Rudbeckia I planted last year. And as you can see only one's come through the winter and it's reaching out for the sunlight. It's not happy in that position. In the past, however, Flomis has been very happy. Hydrangea quercifolia is very happy. All the hydrangeas are. Japanese anemones are happy. The Echinops is growing, but it is once again reaching out, although I haven't supported it. Anyway, I'm going to go for more shade-loving plants in this area, and I'm going to sort of really look at some of the sort of woodland plant lovers and to see if I can improve this border in late summer. It's actually gorgeous in early summer because, of course, it has much more sunlight uh, when the leaves are not on the trees. There is another south facing border in this garden and I haven't really done the right thing with it. The first thing is, is I planted three trees there 11 years ago and it's just proved difficult to do anything with them. Three trees in a row is not a particularly good background anyway. So I think we'll move past on that one but just simply to say a big colourful herbaceous border is a lot more work and I'm not sure if I could have managed two big colourful herbaceous borders, although of course it would have been lovely. Walking briskly past the veg patch, I do do kale, spinach, courgettes and beans, but it's not a big thing in this garden. We can go to a triangle which has been a problem. When we redesigned this garden, 11 years ago, I had a vision that we would have this solid with rhubarb. I regarded rhubarb as a very easy care plant and I loved its big leaves and I thought it would give us some of that impact that Gunnera gives plants because Gunnera really needs a wetter soil than we have. And I thought the big rhubarb leaves would be a lovely contrast to the viburnum small leaves behind it. But it hasn't worked and it's taken me 11 years to realise it's never going to work. I have tried, I've always thought that rhubarb would survive on neglect and this one certainly didn't. I've tried adding garden compost, I've tried watering it, I've tried all sorts of things, I've tried adding different varieties of rhubarb but always there are two or three rhubarb sitting there in bare earth not making a lovely carpet of rhubarb leaves and leaving a lot of bare earth for weeds so I've spent far too long weeding this border. So I've got to accept failure here and I've got to dig up the rhubarb and transfer it to perhaps another part of the veg patch where it might be happier. I'm not going to do this in late summer. There's still the opportunity for a heat wave and if you plant new plants or move plants in late summer, you will then have to do a lot of watering if there is a heat wave. So that's going to be for next month. And after that, I'm going to make this the mini woodland area and I'm just going to sort out woodland loving plants because there are a lot of trees. Once again, this area is very pretty in spring, so I'm sure I can make it pretty in autumn, but I've just got to let go of this idea about the rhubarb. So I don't know, maybe you have a patch of your garden that you had a vision for and it's taken you years to realise that's never going to work, or maybe I've just very slow, I don't know. This brings us to a path behind the main 
south facing border. It's almost like an island border because it's got the parterre on one side and a path on the other. So you can see it from both sides. And at this point, I'd like to point out that the dahlias in the border, not all of them are planted there. There are gaps in any border and I've planted some dahlias in pots, really quite big pots, because if they're going to grow there for the whole season, they will need a bit of space. And I've just literally wedged them in where there are gaps. It means I don't have to dig up the plants around them, so it's not causing any root disturbance. And the foliage of the plants around them will cover up the plastic. The only problem is you do have to remember to specifically water and feed those pots because the plant roots can't access the nutrition in the soil and rain doesn't really get into full pots very easily. Many of you have been asking about the front garden mini meadow, which I haven't mentioned for a while and I'm afraid I haven't mentioned it because it hasn't really been looking very good. It did look lovely in spring. But in summer, it's turned into what looks like very long, neglected lawn grass with lots of weeds in it. And as a few of you have pointed out, it's actually quite a formal structure, this front garden. It's got borders all around with quite established plants. Head gardener Jane Moore, author of Planting for Butterflies and Planting for Wildlife, gave me some advice on this patch. And she suggested I mark it out very clearly from the borders. And that certainly did look better. But even so, it's just not quite working. I'm going to really rethink this and decide if there's a way of making it work or whether we have to go back to having a standard lawn in the middle of the border. But in the meantime, a friend of ours came round and scythed it for us. I don't think he felt he could lend us his scythe in case we chopped our feet off, but he scythed it and so we've cleared that. And it's looking more like a normal lawn, probably is looking a bit better. So next year will be a new beginning for the mini meadow, but at the moment I would say it hasn't really worked in summer, although it did work in spring. We've talked quite a lot about shade loving plants and shady borders in this video, so you might be interested in the shady borders playlist at the end of this video. And if you've had any triumphs or failures in your garden this year, then do leave that in the comments below because it really is a time to look back and look forward. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.